Hello and welcome back to another video and can I just say a big thank you to everyone that likes and watches the videos and comments on them. It's been wonderful to see so many lovely comments and just discussion about the game which has been really nice to see and it's just so lovely that there's such a nice community of people that like to talk about the game, love the game in all its forms and just want to watch videos about it and have a discussion about it. I love that so thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to look at my videos. Really appreciate it. Now, a bit of a theme you might have seen in videos that I make is that I seem to be, without realising, doing comparison videos. So I'll compare different versions of Dungeons & Dragons. How deadly is it? Differences in monsters, differences in additions, as well as the additions that I like personally. And continuing with that theme... Welcome to our comparison of character classes in different editions of Dungeons & Dragons. Today, we'll be exploring the core mechanics and variations of the for most popular classes, fighter, wizard, rogue, and cleric. Starting with the fighter, known as the combat specialist, they rely on their strength and agility to dominate in battle. The wizard, a master of spells and enchantments, can both protect their party and wreak havoc on their enemies. The rogue, a skilled thief, is masters in deception and infiltration, leaving enemies vulnerable. Finally, the cleric, a healer and spiritual leader, provides support to their party with powerful spells and divine intervention. Each class has evolved over the years, with the addition of new abilities and features in each edition of Dungeons and Dragons. In conclusion, Dungeons and Dragons offers a diverse range of character classes, each with their unique strengths and weaknesses. But how have these changed? Shameful, it's over to you. All right, so I admit I actually do make it say, shameful, it's over to you, but the rest is all done by itself. If you were to open up the Beck Me D&D rules and look up to fire, what would you get? Well, you get somebody that has the most hit points in the game, but I don't find them mechanically that exciting. But do they need to be mechanically exciting? Well, let, let's give you an, an example. Say you're a fighter. You've picked the fighter. You want to be the best at hitting somebody in the game. You want to be toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You can smack someone with your sword and hurt them. At level 1, or level 2 for that matter, as a fighter, say for example an arbitrary number of armor class 10, you'd roll a 9 or more to be able to hit that creature or person that you're attacking if their armor class was 10. However, if you were a first level cleric or thief, you would still need to roll a 9 or more on a d20 in order to hit that person. If you were a magic user, you would set, still at that level, you would need to roll a 9 or more to hit that creature. That being said, what advantage does a fighter have in Beckme d d in this example? that he has doesn't have in other editions. Well, apart from having more hit points and the ability to wear any armour and better death saving throws, for example, and things like that, there isn't a huge advantage other than that a fighter hopefully won't get one shot and one killed at level one by some creatures. Can I just say, that's not actually an advantage over other editions, is it? That's just what they get. They are harder to kill than other classes in the game. They don't have an advantage over other editions. I know comparing editions is always not great, but I like comparing things, even though it might be a bit strange sometimes. But they don't have anything that speaks out, yeah, the fight was better in this edition because of this. They were just good for not dying, and they were needed. But they didn't have anything that other editions left out. Now, there are weapon specialisations which fighters did get in Beck Me, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 2nd Edition and things like that. So there are weapon specialisations that came into effect, but that was about it. And there, there were some variations of cleave. Maybe if you killed one creature and you had excess damage left over, you could cleave into another tr creature. But these were optional rules and often not always employed at the table. But the fighter as is, is a lovely example of what had more hit points, could be a bit harder to take down. But there, there to hit wasn't, was pretty much the same. They advanced quicker once you got the levels going, but that could take a while. So what does a 5th edition fighter get, for example? Well, they also get quite high hit points. They get a die 10. Barbarian gets die 12, however. 
but they get a die 10 hit points, much like many later editions of fighters got either die or die 10 hit points. Now you get a fighting style, like a weapon specialization, like they used to get in Beckme or Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. They get a weapon specialization, which could be a plus two to great weapons or things like that, or archery, or they get a specialization in their defense so they can plus one to their armor class and things like that. So they get a little bit more options going there. And they also get the use of Second Wind, where they can heal themselves in the middle of combat if they need to gain some health. Just, you know, they don't get to do it all the time, They but they can do it again after they finish a short rest. This is that healing creep that you might have heard me in previous videos complain about. That's what fighters seem to get. And at second level, they get an action surge so they can make another action. And then they get an archetype where they get even more options at level three. On the whole, they do get a lot more options than in Beckme. Of course they do. This version of Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition was designed for more character building option. It was more building the character. I love building characters. I can't complain about it. I'm not going to start saying that old D&D had better character building options. I simply think you didn't. But I still love old D&D. Next up, this will be a quick one. The Wizard class. What did they get in old Beckme D&D Advanced Dungeons & Dragons? They got a die 4 hit points. Level 1, they got one spell they could cast. Maybe they knew three spells, one of which had to be read magic. Maybe they knew four spells, depended on how you house read it. But they had one spell to cast a day. They didn't have cantrips. They could cast one spell. They could maybe, some additions, you could whip people to try and, you know disorientate them get them off you maybe you could throw a dagger but they'd have one spell a day they'd be dumb and they could have one hit point and they'd be dead go forward to fifth edition they have a die six hit points let's not compare hit points in editions though they get two spells a day but they know three cantrips on top of that and of those two spells they have arcane recovery so they can recover some being a wizard, I must say, I love the wizard class in AD&D, old D&D, and I would like to play one in old D&D. But once you've blown your magical wad, <laughs> who were, for want of a better word, you were sort of not really doing much. You could, you try and maybe hold the torch, maybe throw a dagger in if you had a dagger proficiency, if, if, if they let you throw a dagger in, but you weren't doing much. You were like the nuclear option if you cast a spell you'd hope it was a good one, like a level 1 sleep spell is far better, in my opinion, than taking magic missile and hitting someone. What's the point? Just put everyone to sleep. Things like that are much better. So, for me, Wizard is just... It's a more friendly option to play in new Dungeons & Dragons. Next up, looking at the Cleric. Cleric, I do love the Cleric in old Dungeons & Dragons, but they didn't get a spell until second level in old Dungeons & Dragons. If you look at a lot of the charts... A cleric would have no spell at first level, so they'd just be walking about like a mediocre fighter, though they'd have the same chance to hit as a fighter, as we've already alluded to earlier, and they could wear armour, but they couldn't cast a spell. They could turn undead, but they couldn't heal anyone at first level. Whereas in 5th edition, they know two spells straight away and three cantrips. Again, 5th edition is cantrips. You've got more to do as a magic user and a cleric or a wizard or a druid for that matter. Or anybody that can cast spells in 5th edition due to the inclusion of cantrips. In old D&D, much of the time you did not get that. So the cleric is similar in that it can use lots of weapons and has an all right amount of hit points. Is sort of like a subpar fighter. Next up is the Thief. Now, I think the Thief is a special case here, because in Beckme Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, 2nd Edition Dungeons & Dragons, not every other class could do what a Thief could do. Not every other class could detect a trap. Maybe a Dwarf could underground, but not every other class could disable the trap. Not every other class could walk in total silence. They could sneak, but they couldn't be totally silent. No other class could scale a sheer vertical wall they could climb up a up a mountainside sure lots of people can but a thief can climb up a sheer vertical wall thieves were skill monkeys to the next level in old dungeons and dragons they weren't just your run-of-the-mill skill monkey they they got everything done that nobody else could get done and they were very important to a party in a dungeon or in a city or anywhere really in 5th edition, thieves have much more combat-focused skills. Yes, in old Dungeons & Dragons, a thief could do a backstab, but they had to sneak behind and carefully sneak behind and get the position and stab. In 5th edition, as long as somebody's standing next to the person that the thief is trying to attack, they can get the, the sneak attack in. So, and remember, 5th edition is much more combat oriented. Everybody can do something in combat. Nobody's left standing at the sidelines thinking, well, I've blown all my spells and now I can't do anything. 
or I'm a thief and I can't sneak up on this person. It's too hard to. I just, oh, well, I'll throw, I'll just roll the dice, but I don't get anything special to do. Remember, fifth edition is all about giving everybody something special to do. It's that win win mentality that is much more prevalent in modern games and modern society. Everybody's a winner. Everybody gets something special. You no, know, and it's that whole thing. Is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? That's not for me to say. But these differences in character classes, as I've alluded to, do strike me as is just you are spoon fed the better characters in fifth edition. And I think the characters in fifth edition are better if you're going to create a character. There's so much more options behind it. There is the the archetype of the character. What way are you going to take it? Are you going to be a fighter? Can you be a battle master? Can you be a gladiator character? There's even just for fighters, there's those options and you don't get that in old dungeons and dragons and by the way this isn't me raining down on old dungeons and dragons i love old dungeons and dragons and i'd love to play old dungeons and dragons but even if you go to things like castles and crusades which was created when third edition was out castles and crusades is often seen as a spiritual successor to second edition and what gary gargas had some dealings with it and helped steer the direction of it i believe and even that had special, more special abilities for characters and zero level spells, otherwise known as cantrips, were made into it because it was often seen that maybe people had a little bit too little to do and a little bit too little skills. And Castle Crusades brings that in, in a measurable but still old style value. And I like that. And I suppose what I really want to wrap up this video with is that I think 5th edition characters have a bit too many abilities to a point where we're overwhelmed by choice, which can slow down the game at later levels. However, old edition characters also have a little bit too little choice. I mean, wizards became very powerful later on, but they weren't overwhelming. I, I like what Castles and Crusades have done, and I didn't mean to turn this into a Castles and Crusades advert, because it's not meant to be. However, that's a nice middle ground. However, they could use a few more abilities too. Anyway, what do you think about abilities in different versions of Dungeons & Dragons? Let me know and take care. Bye-bye.